Uh, yes, my name is Katarzyna Sawach and I would like to present you my joint paper with Michał Brzeziński, who is also here. The paper on differences in wealth and wealth inequality among the Central and Eastern European countries. Actually, I kept the title as it was, uh, but uh, we will focus solely on the differences in wealth inequality. This is still work in progress, so our, all comments are welcome. So I was wondering heavily yesterday how to start my presentation since I had an impression that everything I should say first. So I decided to give you the overview of my paper in just one slide. Actually, I'm cheating a bit because here are no results, but, but apart from the results. So what we do in this, in this paper is that we model household net wealth. Uh, we use data from household finance and consumption survey uh, from 2014 for one country of Hungary 2013 to be to be precise uh, this is the sur the survey is conducted by uh, European Central Bank this is second wave of this survey but the first time the first moment in the history when these countries this particular central eastern european countries are included in the survey so this is now we have data on household wealth so this is one we can we can start we can study it so the the countries we focus on in this study are Estonia, Latvia, Hungary, Poland, and Slovakia. And additionally, we compare our results to an example of developed, highly developed country, uh, Germany. So what we do is a microeconomic decomposition of differences in the Gini coefficient, but for wealth, not for income, like in the previous paper. Uh, uh, in, uh, and up to this point, our contribution is kind of empirical, uh, but the, the, uh, the last dot on this slide uh, shows our kind of uh, methodological contribution because we also perform survey weight, survey weight calibration to correct for the problem of the missing reach. And the, the problem of the missing reach, the, 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 the lack of the, the richest people in the, in the surveys, and was already discussed during this conference. Uh, it's not only, it not only relates to wealth studies, but also to income studies. Uh, so I will just show you one, one slide. This is a, a result from our companion paper in which we correct for the problem of the missing reach in this, this survey. This is, this is this, the same survey, household finance and consumption survey. And we additionally, uh, use data from the national reach list. So for example, 100, the richest Poles. The same for Slovakia, Hungary, Estonia, uh, and Latvia. Uh, and uh, the, the arrows show the, the difference in Gini coefficient for wealth when we perform this, this correction. So you can see, for example, that for Slovakia, including the, the top, top wealth, top, top richest, uh, rises the Gini index by uh, around 10 percentage points. The results for uh, Western European countries in, on this slide, namely Spain, France, and Germany, are for comparison purposes and come from the paper by Bach and others 2018. So this is the motivation for, for the, uh, this, the second part of our paper, this, this correction of weights. Uh, and now let me follow standard path of presentation, so give you the general motivation and then uh, data I described already, but methods, uh, results, and conclusions. So why do we study wealth? Well, there is a disproportion in the field between uh, this in the field between the study of income inequality and, and wealth inequality, I think we would agree with this statement that we better and better understand the drivers of income inequality both within and between countries, and still little is known about the drivers or of wealth inequality. And until very recently, it was mainly due to, due to the scarcity of reliable data on household or on household wealth. We have less data, less possible data sources on wealth than on income. In many countries, we don't have, in majority of countries, we don't have wealth tax. We can have, so we don't have, we cannot have administrative data like we can have for income. Maybe we can have data on inheritance tax, but, tax, but still it's not, not all. So, so this is one, one, one motivation. And on the other hand, we know that wealth is of prime importance as a determinant of individual economic well-being. Well, uh, wealth uh, serves as a kind of a safety net. It smooths income shocks when we lose our job, but we have uh, savings. It's not such a big problem, at least for, for, for some period of time. Wealth also, uh, 
enables individuals to, to maintain their consumption during retirement. Uh, it itself generates income, thus shaping income distribution. Um, it also is a source of, maybe a source of power, a source and political political power to a source of uh, recognition. So all the discussion about rising social tensions due to rising inequalities uh, is relevant uh, when we think about in about wealth, too, not only about income. Uh, and wealth is, wealth is actually more unequally distributed than income, and exists, existing studies show huge cross-country differences in wealth inequality. Existing studies focus on Western world, and little is known about Central and European countries, so that's why the paper. So our research questions are, what factors contribute to the cross-country differences in wealth inequality? So we will take one by one uh, our five countries. Actually, we will choose uh, as a refer reference country Slovakia, which is the one with the lowest level, level of wealth inequality, and then we will compare each other country to, to Slovakia, and we will ask the question why inequality in country A is, is bigger, or, bigger or smaller than inequality in country B, which is of course a big question. And as you will see in, the, in a minute, uh, majority of the effect will be unexplained, unexplained, but still still something we will be maybe able to say. And the second, the second research question, does the problem of the missing rich in household wealth surveys influence our answer to the first question? So methods, we, as I said, we perform the composition of the differences in the Gini coefficient for household wealth. It's a Hakka blinder-like, but it bases on a uh, recentered influence function. Uh, it comes from the paper by Davis, Fortin, and Lemieux, uh, 2017. I won't go into much detail here, um, but what it allows us to do is that it allows us to assess the importance of individual factors in explaining cross-country differences. So in the first step, it, uh, the, the total difference is decomposed into four components that are listed on the slide. So composition effect that, in other words, explained part, that re is related to the changes in the distribution of coverage, then so-called wealth structure effect, so the unexplained one, the, or the co coefficient one, that arise due to changes in returns to, returns to covariates. And there are also two other uh, components, specification error and reweighting error, which should be sufficiently small, and if it is, if they are, uh, then we, we can uh, be sure, or it assures us that our specification is correct. And regarding this survey weight, weight calibration, so the last dot on this slide, uh, just to be clear, uh, we don't impute any data here. We just have totals, and we just calibrate weights. So this relies on the strong assumption that the distribution of covariates among the missing rich is the same as the distribution of this covariates among the non-missing rich, that those who we wish who we have in the in the data. So I admit that this is a strong assumption, but uh, I think it's the best we can we can do here. Of course, we are not the first to to perform cr cross country differences, the composition in wealth. But as I mentioned, existing studies show uh, focus on. Western world, and neither study, as far as I know, attempts to correct for the missing rich problem. Data I already described. Uh, our variable of interest is net household <coughs> wealth, uh, defined as total assets excluding public and occupational pension minus liabilities. And covariates for the composition are pretty standard. Uh, <coughs> these are household type and size, age, education, attain education attainment, and labor market status of the household head, household income, value of gifts and inheritances received, housing status, which will become important, and saving practices. So the results. So the, the blue bar uh, shows, uh, represents the raw difference in, in Gini coefficient <laughs> between the, the two countries. So for example, the last blue bar is difference between the Gini for wealth between Latvia and Slovakia. Uh, this is before weight, weight calibration. And this blue bar is decomposed into green bar, which means explained part, and the red bar, which means unexplained. 
hey, not perfect, green bar plus, uh, plus red bar, uh, almost perfectly sum up to, to the blue bar, not perfectly because we have this specification and we're waiting errors, but they are small. And so first thing you can see from this slide is obviously that large part is unexplained, which is, uh, which is not, uh, not very specific to our study. This, the, the, some studies for, for Western Europe also show, also show uh, big uh, unexplained country effects. But still there are some bars so we can, we can take a look what's inside them. I won't read you the numbers, of course, just wanted to give you the overview of the results, although the previous paper used similar methodology, so, so, uh, so it's not, not, um, not surprising what we're doing here. So first, first we decomposed for this, for this big components, uh, explained and unexplained, and then uh, within this components we, we, we decompose, uh, within these components we decompose further into, into, into the covariates so to look for the, the importance, relative importance of the, of the covariates we have. So, uh, what, what, um, what we, what we could see clearly from, clearly from, from this table was that housing is important. By housing, I mean uh, housing ownership structure. Whether you are the, the owner of your house, or you pay mortgage, or you're a renter, and and this this housing, when when we look at the, when we calculate the, co the coefficients and their relative size to total total explained effect, we can see that uh, uh, they in, in they. Uh, mm, they, they, they are up to one, one, one third uh, of, uh, they explain up to one third of these explained effects in Central and Eastern European countries. This is on the left. So this one third would be for, for the comparison between Poland and Slovakia. Um, so there is something in it. Uh, on the right, I put, uh, I showed you the graph, uh, we selected Central Eastern European countries versus Germany, so you can see that differences are much bigger. Uh, these are percentages, right? Uh, which may, may, maybe it is obvious in the sense that that maybe Central Eastern European countries are more more similar to each other than they are to, their, to Germany. However, maybe Germany was not the best the best choice here. Uh, due to its um, specific ownership, home, home ownership structure, and and yeah, and uh, and actually, this 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 bars uh, should be re reversed in a sense, in a sense that uh, Germany is more unequal than these countries. So this is other way around. This this difference is here other way around. Uh, yeah, that's it. So then, wealth structure effects uh, from. So the the returns to to covariates, and there's a lot of heterogeneity. We we cannot see clear picture yet here. Uh, for example, uh, in comparisons between Poland and Slovakia and Hungary versus Slovakia, we see that returns to education play a role. When we when we look at uh, Hungary versus Slovakia and Estonia versus Slovakia, we can see that returns to income play play a role. But still, uh, still it's. A, Kind of preliminary, as I said, and we we are trying to find a kind of bigger bigger picture and deepen it more. And here, just to illust illustrate that, yes, calibrating weight uh, makes difference. So it's, I mean, I think that you expected it. And so, so red bars mean uh, the uh, on the example of uh, of housing as a as a part of explained effort. Housing as a, as a part of explained effect. Red, red bars mean uh, explained part. I mean explained part with calibrated weights and and green bars with green bar, bars without. And you can see the difference. Um, so to conclude, uh, inequality of household net wealth is quite diverse in the Central and Eastern European region. Uh, total explained effects are usually smaller than total unexplained effects. Actually, the third one I, I haven't shown to you. In comparisons to Germany, total explained effect is significant in majority of countries and larger than the total unexplained effect. 
Differences in housing status distribution are usually significant and account for up to one third of the difference in explained effects. And here further research is needed. Why is it so? What, well, maybe for sure there are some institutional factors uh, behind that. Uh, some maybe historical factors we should we should take a, a closer look at somehow. Uh, there's a lot of heterogeneity in returns to the coverage, and again here further research is needed. And calibrating calibrating weights makes a difference here. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Katarina. Let uh, the uh, discussant is Martina Misikova. Thank you also for staying very much within the allotted time. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you for the opportunity to, uh, to read a paper by Katarina and Michal. Uh, I think the, the topic is, is very important, of course, but I'm very happy to see that there starts to appear papers on uh, wealth inequality on Eastern European countries, because really the, uh, the literature is, is missing, basically. And uh, the reason is, is obvious, the, the data, it's, uh, it's quite obvious. And what this, what this realized is that if we want to well, assess individual well-being or even poverty, we should always like, uh, look at, look at, ah, sorry, at uh, three dimensions, which are income, expenditures, and wealth. And I'm happy that uh, Eurostat tries to do something with that. Because they, the, and Eurostat and European Commission stated that it is important to ensure the availability of harmonized statistics at EU level that cover the distributional aspects of households' income, consumption, and wealth. And then, as I know, they already started to do some statistical matching of, of the three data sources. But it's what's even more important, and I think it's quite a good news, that, uh, as I know from the Czech Statistical Office, which is my country, uh, Czech, uh, Czech Republic is piloting this, uh, this survey this year, so I hope that uh, also other countries will join this survey so that we can make more comparisons also for the countries where we so far don't have any, any data on wealth. So I think this is good news. <laughs> Hopefully we will, uh, we will have the data soon. Uh, and back to the paper, uh, actually the, uh, the Authors uh, are still working on, on the paper, and the version which I read was very, very brief. I already know that the authors uh, updated the version and uh, added some, some more figures and, and so on. So what I, uh, what I wanted to say is that I expect that they will <coughs> describe some points in, in more details. For example, in, uh, in the chapter on, on data, I would uh, welcome to read more de details about the survey design. Uh, for example, uh, how the data are, are conducted, whether all the individuals, individual members of, of households are surveyed like in the EU silk or whether it's just one selected person. Because then, for example, I, I don't uh, know from the, from the text what are the individual characteristics characteristics of household head, because I don't know who is the household head, whether it's the selected person or whether there was some kind of concept uh, of construction of the, of the household head. And similarly, for example, gifts and inheritances received, I don't know when <laughs> and by whom, whether again by one member or by all members. And also the, yeah, the reference period of, of the variables might be quite, quite helpful too to uh, understand. Uh, also the methodology and results uh, at the version which I read were also uh, again very brief. Uh, I believe you will, you will extend it, but for example, uh, uh, decomposition, uh, uh, well the, the effect is decomposed into four components, but in, in the results you basically describe just two, but as I uh, as I uh, heard now, uh, you will probably explain it because yeah, you were talking about it, but it's not written in the paper. 
And also the interpretation was not really easy to follow in the first version, but actually you edit all the figures which will very help to, to the paper. Well, uh, as I understood it from, yeah, because the, the figures were missing in the version I, I read, I might maybe uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes misunderstood the, the results in the table. But what I, uh, what I think, or what I understood from the paper, was that really the housing seems to, housing status seems to be to, uh, to be the, per, basically the only factor of, of uh, the wealth differences. Uh, what I saw was that the, uh, the explained parts compared with, uh, with Slovakia, the explained parts were, were relatively low. Which, is, which makes sense because we suppose these countries to be quite similar in, in the characteristics. And they were, uh, the explained parts were relatively high uh, compared to Germany, which again uh, quite makes sense. And uh, what I read from the table, uh, it seemed that uh, the housing status almost fully represents the explained difference in, in both the cases. But you, you show the figures which, uh, uh, which were more precise, so it's, it wasn't like uh, it, the housing didn't represent 100% of the explained parts, but still it was quite high. Okay, so housing status seems to be, to be the only uh, important factor. But uh, I have to say that, it's, that this is quite expected for me, because uh, in Germany uh, there is very high share of, of housing uh, which is rented, and a, low share uh, of housing owned compared to the other countries because in the CEE countries it's very common to own the, uh, the housing, the, the houses and flats. So I s some, somehow expected this, this result. So uh, I was thinking about what, uh, what else to focus on in the paper to, to increase the contribution or the impact. And I was thinking about the other variables. Uh, well, I think that uh, first of all you, you you should maybe in the paper focus more on distinguishing or explaining that even if the factors are not, uh, not significant in your analysis, it doesn't mean that they do not contribute to uh, the inequality at the country level. Actually, because for example, gifts and inheritances doesn't have any effect in your study, but we know that they, on a country level, uh, they uh, uh, contribute substantially to, to the wealth inequality. And what I uh, wanted to ask is whether it's not possible in the, in the data to distinguish what was inherited. Because probably, it's, or it seems that in the CEE countries, it might be real estates which, which are inhabited. But probably in, in Germany, it will be rather capital which is inherited. If this could be distinguished, it would maybe show something. It was just, uh, just an idea. Uh, what I'm missing in, uh, in the variables is some uh, variable for urban and rural areas, which I think should be available in the data. Uh, yeah, and that's uh, what I almost said before, that I uh, lack some kind of background, because really the literature on these countries is, is missing, and I, I would add there more empirical results. E even the comparison of income and wealth inequality would be helpful for the readers, I think. And definitely, I would add there some uh, short, short section on uh, the decomposition at the country level. Because, uh, well, it's not, I haven't found any paper where it would be included so far. I only uh, found papers where there was Germany and Slovakia. And the differences are quite huge. So I think you, you could really uh, show us the, the, uh, the decomposition at country level, which would I, I think it would be also helpful then to understand the the interpretation of the results between the countries. So, yeah, that's that's all. Yeah. Thank you very much, Martina. Katerina, do you want to make a few comments? Well, I shall say thank you for your comments. Uh, yes, this is very preliminary, uh, and uh, thank you for your uh, insights. What we what we can include, it's very valuable, valuable. Uh, yeah, especially this urban rural thing, and 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 it's always yeah, good, good to know what what was not clear for the reader, and it it helps to improve the the, the version. Thank you. 
Okay, let's open the, I mean, uh, for discussion, Anna. So I'm very sorry because I actually read the paper because I thought that I was assigned to your paper first of all, and not rather to the previous paper. And I, not far enough, just one time, but I got a couple of questions, rather technical questions. The, the first question is about how you calculate Gini because wealth is not exactly the same what, that, uh, what is income. Uh, and you have many people with negative wealth probably in your data. So those people for whom liabilities are higher than their, what, they, what they have. So people with debts. And so how you deal with in your calculations, it's the question. And also I noticed that there is an income variable in your regressions. And so I, probably you have problems with the income variable because there may be a reverse causality from wealth to income. Uh, rather than causality from income to wealth. So, because higher wealth, it can generate more income. And the income is your explanatory variable. Uh, so, and uh, the last question is about, so you use this uh, 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 weights to find, to correct for missing reach. And uh, I wonder whether this problem can be uh, corrected with uh, adding weights, new weights, with reweighting at all, because uh, if uh, these people with uh, quite extremely rich, then uh, completely missing from the date from your data, you can improve your estimates, but rather you can't solve this problem entirely. Yes, um, I'm not. I, I would like to uh, probably talk to you during the break. I'm not sure. I catch the last thing, and. Uh, I'm not sure I'm uh, now ready to on the spot to to answer your very relevant and specific questions. Um, yeah, so I, maybe, maybe or maybe my my co-author wants to to drop into this discussion and 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 help me with the specific specific questions because I I won't I won't say this now. Do you want or micro? Use, use your microphone. <laughs> Okay, thanks uh, for the question. And I, I haven't also uh, catch the phrase about the weight, the, the last question about the weight. Uh, the, my question was that you re-weight your, your individuals in your data, but uh, re-weighting means that you have actually some of these rich individuals in your data, but if they are completely missing from the survey, if you don't have super rich, if I don't know, Russian oligarchs don't, show up in the Rostad service and probably some Polish oligarchs, German oligarchs, they, don't, they also don't show up in the service. So can you, how, how can you deal with these problems with free weight? Well, um, okay, sure, some super, super rich are missing and, and we cannot add much information or any information about about them, but there is also uh, some pe there are also some people who are rich, very rich, and not super super rich, not oligarchs, and they are also richer than those people who are the richest uh, included in the survey. The, the gap for most of the countries is pretty huge, and with reweighting, we are able, hopefully, or the, this is the assumption that we are covering at least of those. Uh, rich, which are richest than the richest person included, but also not that rich as the oligarchs. But this is so. so I, I, is, I see, but uh, so how you can uh, uh, by using this technique, you can uh, actually build the whole distribution and make the estimates for the uh, upper tail of the distribution. But you actually try to use by reweighting these individuals in your regressions. Not to uh, to have the whole dis distributions of the whole dis or the estimates of the whole distribution. But to <laughs> let's leave this one for maybe later. Yeah. Do you want actually just to address the the first two points that yes, Anna yes. made very briefly? Very briefly, uh, 
regarding negative or zero wealth values, we simply include those, those values in the cal calculation of genes, and this is the usual practice in wealth inequality uh, literature. And the second question was about income, right? Income and wealth and causality. Of course, of course, this is not, not uh, a study about causality, just correlations, but all other Covariates have have this 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 problem associated with education, for example, is also a similar um, type of of covariate. So I agree, but we do not. Well, we can skip income, right? But but this is the only choice we have. I think we have one. Thank you, thank you, Michal. One more question. Yeah, uh, thank you for this very interesting presentation. Um, I have one suggestion uh, regarding the uh, the property question. Um, yeah, because that was my first thought too. Like, like the commentator said that um, that um, bequests do not play a role was very striking for me because normally, at least in um, well in Central Europe, they play a big role in the determinant of wealth and wealth inequality. And if you take, I think if you take a closer look at property with the HFCS, you can um, you can divide between the main residence or other properties, the household. Hold. So this could maybe be interesting. And another thing which would be interesting is what we see in the wealth distribution in, um, well, in the HFCS is that you have a lot of, of property in the middle of the distribution relatively seen. And if you don't look at the Gini but look at other um, inequality coefficients like the top 1% share or some, um, some percentile ratios, I think that the um, the results that you would get would be very different because, because the gene is so centered, well, puts a lot of weight at the middle of the distribution. And maybe for other inequality measures, these, the, the findings would be very different. It would be interesting to see. You want to? No. Thank you. Thank you for your suggestion. I think actually before we, we are almost on time. So this is the end of the session. But before we end, actually, I have.